name is Rob and welcome to another in my uh, series of videos on working with and learning about GIMP. Now if you watched the previous video to this one you'll know that we uh, covered the uh, rectangle selection tool uh, so we're going to recap on that in a moment um, but then we're going to move on to these two similar tools they do selections as well but in a slightly different way we're going to look at the differences as well so let's start by uh, bringing up the image that we had in the previous video by the way you can uh, to load a, an image up into GIMP you can um, pick it up and drop it onto an empty GIMP window and GIMP will open it for you there another useful tip is if you press the tab key then your two palette your palettes and your dialogue disappear you press it again you come back the I use that uh, sorry this window has to be in focus I use that so you focus on your image you click on your image window to focus it and then press tab and they disappear I use that because uh, I want to I need to uh, size that window to this size so that you can you can see it all and then I press uh, shift and uh, control and E to make that image fit in there window and then uh, press tab again to bring back my palettes okay just to recap briefly on um, what we did in the last video uh, we were using the rectangle selection tool and this gives you uh, does exactly what it says on the tin gives you a rectangular selection many of its features it shares with the other selection tools we're going to look at the feathering of edges and so on and so forth some of the features it doesn't share for obvious reasons have become obvious when you look at the other tools so uh, let's look at the first of those now let's look at this one the uh, ellipse selection tool so I'll take my ellipse selection tool and make a selection Only this time I don't get a square Oh, I get a circle-ish, basically an ellipse, um, because I can make it a circle. One way to ensure that it is a circle is, again, you can use the aspect ratio. If you remember from the last video, if you select one to one in there, oops, oops, done. one to one, then when I make a selection, I'm only going to be able to make a circle. And there's no way for it to be elliptical. The ellipse selection tool shares uh, with the rectangular selection tool these features feathering edges and expanding from center if you remember from last time along with the aspect ratio and also the positioning and size you can set those manually if you so need to do. Also highlighting and guides works with uh, this tool as well so they're all very useful uh, when you need to make a selection based on uh, one of those shapes now what about when you need to make any other kind of selection we have this tool this is the uh, freehand select tool as you can see not many features here we have still got feathered edges and anti-aliasing but um, we don't have some of these other things and for good reason which you'll probably uh, see in a moment when we begin to use this tool. Okay, I'm just going to take my zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in just here. Take my free hand selection tool and I'm going to make a selection. Begin making a selection. Now the way to work with this tool is first of all you click where you want to begin your selection and it gives you a, a little anchor point and then this line follows your mouse or pen. I'm using a pen and it's inviting you to make another what well, to click again inside the image to make another point and using this method repeatedly you can make a polygonal uh, selection a many-sided selection basically any shape you like now uh, eventually you need to get back to where you were and you click in the original, the first uh, circle that was created and that completes the selection and now we've got a shape selection you can treat that just like you treated any of the other selections um, for example you can 
feather the edges. And uh, cut that. Select none. So that's useful when you need to make a selection of a very precise and particular shape. Now let's take a look at making a selection using the uh, guides, um, the highlighting and the expand from center feature. Let's take a selection tool, square one will do. And what I'm going to do here, if you look down here on the options for this, I'm going to switch on guides. There are various guides you can use. I'm just going to switch on this one, center lines. When you make your selection it looks like the same as it did before except you have a line up the center and along the center um, horizontally so you can you're able to see exactly where the oops exactly where the um, center of your selection is both horizontally and vertically there are some other guides uh, listed on there as well um, which you may find useful depending on what it is that you're doing. Um, made a little mistake there which you may have noticed uh, I've got highlight switched on so I was going to show you that next so I might as well show you that now. Um, highlight when you switch that on the, the check mark is down here when you switch that on the uh, you will have already noticed that the selection that you make whatever selection it is is highlighted the rest of the image is slightly dimmed it just helps you um, gauge exactly where your selection is and then as well as all that you've got the expand from uh, center let me choose another tool and we've got expand from center here now with this option switched on when I make my selection I can position my cursor exactly where I want the center of the selection to be and then okay so finally in this video let's deal with making a complex selection more complex selection Let's, for example, take the Rectangle Select tool. Let's just make a selection. Now, if you notice over here, there's some little icons we haven't dealt with yet. There's four of them. This is the one that's usually selected, and it just means normal. But if you hold down the Shift key, then this one is selected. And if we make another selection, that intersects the one that we already made it keeps the selection we made before but makes another selection where the two are joined together just to prove that to you if I press delete and select none then as you can see there is my more complex selection if you um, hold down the control key when you're making your second selection I've just made a circular selection there I'm now going to hold down the control key and you can see this icon is selected now the reverse thing happens the selection subtracts from the original so if I delete that you can see do select none then the second selection I made subtracted from the first and the final item in this trio of, of uh, modes here is this one. What this one will do is take the intersection of two selections and make that the selection. Um, so before you make a second selection hold down shift and control then make your second selection and delete that and as you can see it's only where the two selections intersected whereas the actual selection was made. Okay, so that's it for this one. Um, check out the next video that will be dealing with uh, layers. That's uh, this dialogue here on the right. Till then, see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.